Hello, my name is Brian Mituf, the president of Mituf Software. And in this video, we'll demonstrate how Delphi can communicate with Arduino. To program Arduino, we'll use one of the latest products from Mituf Software called Vizuino. Vizuino is a graphical development environment for Arduino bots. It is a tradition to start demonstration of new technology with Hello World program. In this case, however, we'll start with Hello Delphi. Visuino allows you to program Arduino by simply dropping visual components and connecting them. In this case, we'll start with text value component. We'll set the value to Hello Delphi. And we'll connect the output of the component to the serial port. After finishing our design, we can generate the Arduino code by clicking on this button or pressing F9. This will open the Arduino IDE, which is a free open source development environment. And here we can see the generated by Visuino code and we can compile and upload it to our Arduino board by clicking on this button. The code has been uploaded and now we can see the result. Visuino also includes a serial terminal and we can connect to the Arduino board with it. Now if we restart our board by pressing on the reset button of the Arduino, we will see Hello Delphi arriving through the serial port. We can also make Hello Delphi appear periodically. We can do that by adding a clock jump. We can leave the frequency as once a second or we can do it two times a second. Again, we can generate the Arduino code. Compile and upload. If we connect, we'll see that twice a second, we'll receive Hello Delphi. Now that we have created our first Arduino project, it's time to switch to Delphi and see how we can receive data from Arduino. We'll start with a VCL form application. We'll add a TCL COM port component, which is part of the upcoming communication lab from into software. We we'll add a terminal, also part of communication lab. We'll connect the two components. Finally, we'll select the COM port to which our Arduino board is connected, compile, and run the application. You can see that we start to receive Hello Delphi. Receiving Hello Delphi is probably good enough for quick demonstration. However, in reality, the advantage of the Arduino board is that it has a large number of analog and digital inputs and outputs, and we usually want to receive data from those. So to continue, we'll start with new project. We will connect analog input zero to the serial port and we'll generate the Arduino code. Then we'll compile and upload the code. If we switch to Visuino, we can connect and see the data.
In addition, Visuino has a scope component that allows me to monitor the data as it arrives from the sensor. In this case, I use a photoresistor and I measure the lighting condition. At the moment, I'm covering and uncovering the resistor with my hand. If we switch back to our Delphi application, we can run it again and see the same data arriving here. Now the comport component also has on the receive event and in it we can receive the data and convert it to text. Since I know that the data arrives in text form, this is fine. However, working with this type of data, especially since it's going to arrive in chunks, is difficult. Furthermore, this approach allows us to receive data from only one data channel. Arduino boards have a very large number of analog and digital channels, and accessing from Delphi only one channel at a time is hardly practical. Visual and Communication Lab have very good solution for this problem. Again, we'll start with new project in Visual. We'll add a packet component. We'll connect the output of the packet component to the serial channel. We'll add couple of analog channels to the packet component and couple of digital channels. For the head marker, we'll add some random value as example 5555. This will allow Arduino and Delphi to identify the unique static of a package. The packet and packet components guarantee that this value will not appear anywhere in the data using special algorithm. Now we can connect our analog channels. As well as our digital channels. Furthermore, we can specify how often we want to receive data updates. We can do that again by adding a clock generator. And in this case, we'll set that we want to receive data 10 times a second. If we don't do that, we'll receive data as fast as Arduino can provide it, which can overwhelm our communication. Now we can generate the necessary Arduino code. And we can upload it to our Arduino. Visuino is capable of displaying multi-channel packetized data. In this case, we'll select the packet component we want to process data from and click Connect. you can see all of the data arriving. And you can monitor it in gauges and LEDs as well. Now that we have Arduino sending the packetized data, let's see how we can receive and visualize this data in Delphi. We'll start again with VCL form application Add a COM port component. Select the port from the component. Add unpacketizer. Select the same value for the bytes of the head marker. Double click on the unpacket component. Add two float channels. 
and two boolean channels are these called components gauge thermometer and two LEDs switch to the open wire view <coughs> connect the COM port to the unpacket the first channel of the unpacket to the scope and the gauge component the thermometer to the second floating point channel the boolean to the first LED and the second LED to the second boolean channel we can rearrange the components again since the analog channels in Visuino are normalized and have values between 0 and 1 it will be best if we set range 0 to 1 for both the thermometer and the angular gauge so for both of them we will set a max value of 1 let's compile and run the application you can see the data arriving from Arduino and being visualized if we want to use the data inside our code we can use a real value component and connect it to one of the analog channels the component has on process data event where we can receive the data and do something with it if we want to process the boolean data we can use this example a TLL sync component connected to the Boolean channel and implement its on change event. There are also other available options. In addition to being able to send data to a serial port, the Visuino is capable of sending the same data over wired or wireless network. You can achieve that by using Ethernet shield on your Arduino board and adding that shield to the Arduino component, then adding sockets to that shield and specifying the corresponding port of the sockets. Once this is done, you will have available TCP server socket where you can connect your packet component in the same way as you did with the serial port. Alternatively, you can use ESP8266 Wi Fi board as ESP8266 is controlled through a serial communication you can use one of the serial ports on your Arduino and control the module once that is done you can also add sockets such as server socket and again use packet component to send data we are working to add socket components to communication lab and they should be available in the next month or so. This allows creating real Internet of Things solutions with Delphi and Visuino. 
This networking functionality allows not only Arduino to connect with Delphi, but multiple Arduino boards to connect and talk to each other. In addition to Visuino and the rest of the Mito software libraries for Delphi, Mito software also offers a beta version of the OpenWire Studio. OpenWire Studio allows easy creation of multitude of data visualization and processing solutions. In this case, we'll use OpenWire Studio to receive data from Arduino and visualize it. We'll start again by adding COM port component, unpacket component, scope, gauge, thermometer, and two LEDs. We'll select the port for the COM port component, connect it to the unpacket component, add two floating point channels, two boolean channels, set 5555 for the bytes of the head marker, and connect the other components similar way as we did in Delphi. Also set max one for the thermometer and angle of gauge. Then run the application. And you will see the data arriving and being displayed. We can also run in debug mode. Where we can see the data as it arrives. In addition to the demonstrated Arduino support with Delphi, Mito Software offers a range of other products, including VideoLab, a video processing library. Audio Lab, Audio Processing Library, Signal Lab, Digital Signal Processing Library, Vision Lab, Computer Vision Library, Plot Lab, Data Visualization Library, Instrument Lab, Visual Instrumentation Library, Intelligence Lab, Artificial Intelligence Library, Logic Lab, Boolean Logic Library, Animation Lab, Universal Animation Library, Visual Live Binding, Universal Visual Live Binding Library, Me Too Frontime, Free Delphi Library, OpenWire Studio, which we demonstrated a graphical development environment for Windows, Visuino, which we also saw a graphical development environment for Arduino. We also support some open source libraries, including OpenWire and IGDI Plus. Thank you for watching, and now it's time for questions and answers. Excellent. You know, that was. Uh a fabulous presentation demonstration of how you can use Delphi and also this world of these maker boards, these small little boards, Arduino boards and others. It's very, very excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, there's some questions and so let's go through those and then I, I may have a couple myself. Let's see. When will Visuino be released? Uh, Visuino is currently in uh, beta. It has been in beta for about three months. It most likely will be released uh, officially in about a month or a little bit more than a month from now. Uh, 
the current beta is in pretty much complete state as it is right at the moment. There are things like uh, documentation and uh, uh, that's pretty much about it, some documentation and determining how exactly it's going to be uh, distributed and logistics in essence. Yep. Um, there are numerous, numerous Arduino boards available by many vendors. <laughs> Uh, which boards does Visuino support? Or maybe there's a category or a common specification to look for? Yes, it supports... Uh, uh, it's it's a long list. I will not be able to go through the whole list, but it supports uh, practically... Uh, it supports all of the official Arduino boards. It supports uh, practically all of the compatible with the official Arduino boards, and it supports few uh, non-compatible um, boards such as, uh, uh, I, I forgot the exact name, but uh, there was uh, oh, Digistark uh, Pro and uh, uh, there was another one, so Trinket, uh, Trinket uh, Pro, so those, uh, those boards are also supported. We are working prior to the official release to add uh, support even for more boards. Uh, we introduced last week, uh, which is a great news for, develop for uh, Delphi developers, uh, a uh, component SDK software development kit for Visuino, which allows you to create components for Visuino. The software development kit uses Delphi to create the components. So all Delphi developers can write additional components uh, for Arduino, and uh, if they are component vendors, uh, obviously sell those. Uh, in addition to that, we are working to release a software development kit or expansion kit, as it uh, probably is better to be said, which allows you to add support for new type of boards. So if you have, if you're a board manufacturer and want to add support for your board, uh, you can add that support as well. So uh, this win is made to be openly expandable and obviously uh, we want to make it expandable and have people that expand it use Delphi because we love Delphi uh, and uh, hence all of the software development kits for Visuino, uh, at least uh, for now, uh, will be using Delphi, and uh, hopefully more people will use Delphi too, especially in the Arduino world. Yep. And uh, Troy just made a comment. Wow, this is so much better than using Arduino assembler. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It absolutely is. Let's see. Um, there's a question here, what about using beacons on an Arduino? Does Visuino handle beacons? I guess you could get a, what, a Bluetooth L, does, do Arduino boards have Bluetooth LE built in or is there a plug-in board? Well, well, uh, it's typically done through plug-in boards, but there are for sure some clones, and, well, not clones because it's an open source platform, but some non-official non, non, uh, non Arduino boards, let's say, uh, that have it built in. I mean, there are literally new devices coming out almost every day on Kickstarter, and some of them have uh, uh, Bluetooth and so on and so forth. At the moment, we don't have specific components for Bluetooth. Uh, However, we are adding new components all the time. We'll be, uh, we have made already the component SDK as first version uh, available. Anybody can add additional components. Uh, the, there, is, there are so many, so many components and so many uh, different flavors of board expansions and things like that. And, and, and new ones are appearing as I said, almost on a daily basis, this is a very, very vibrant uh, uh, vibrant ecosystem. So that means that while there is no official component at the moment specifically for beacons, uh, one may appear uh, within days from now, uh, developed either by uh, me to software or by somebody else. Yeah, I mean, this, this whole world of these kind of boards just you know, fits right nicely, and you'll see lots of conversations about 
these boards working in the quote unquote Internet of Things, especially for things like beacons Absolutely. and other kinds of sensors in the home and elsewhere. Uh, if you go to any kind of maker fairs, uh, you'll see all sorts of plug-in modules for these boards. And the other one is Raspberry Pi. Of course, Microsoft is, has made a big announcement about having a, a Windows 10 core subset version that would run on Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, and then they also talk, are talking about Arduino support. So, you know, it, when in the future when Windows 10, I think they call it Windows 10 Core, or maybe it's called Windows 10 IoT or Maker version, uh, then it gets uh, might get pretty exciting for some people as well. Yeah. Uh, and then Richard just says, great stuff waiting for the Visuino release. Excellent. Um, so I, I had a couple questions, and maybe some people will put uh, questions in uh, in the in the uh, in the packet unpacket. Why is there that head marker property? Yeah, uh, that that marker uh, uniquely identifies the packet. Uh, it allows multiple things. First of all, it ensures in streams such as serial streams where you can connect in the stream in the middle of communication, not like uh, in normal networking stream to discover where the packet actually starts. Uh, the same uh, marker can be used to distinguish between different type of packets as well. So that is the purpose of the market. It's like unique synchronization header for the packet. Okay. Is there is there a, either a specification or guidance on what you should use for the head marker? Should it be alternating bits or? No, or you, absolutely, ran, absolutely random. You can put if you wish even zero zero or just one zero or just three zeros, I would recommend putting two bytes, any values, preferably not values that often happen in the packets. So, for example, zero zero may not be that good because zero zero may appear in the packets. Anything other than uh, like zero zero or uh, two fifty uh, F, 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 F effectively uh, is absolutely perfectly fine. Yeah, and that, that's I was thinking about how do you pick a pattern that wouldn't appear in a... It, it doesn't matter. If it appears, uh, the software takes care of it. So uh, just just if you pick a pattern that will uh, uh, that is less likely to appear, the software less likely will have to take special care of it. That's all. The implications are minimal. Yeah. Uh, there's a question here. Could Arduino work with old... RS-232 communication, I think most of the boards are USB, but I guess you could convert USB to... Yes, it will absolutely work with RS-232, with older style uh, RS-232, absolutely. It should be able to work out of the box with that, as it is right now. I, I don't have that on my system, uh, but uh, uh, since, since the USB is a virtual COM port, and since we are supporting all of the COM ports on both sides, uh, it absolutely will work. Yep. Um, so you mentioned, um, without having it listed on your products, the this thing called Communication Lab. Can you talk a little more about Communication Lab? And, and you mentioned that maybe it was coming soon, I guess the next new lab from Metoff Software? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, a communication lab obviously is in development. It is used. It was developed as part of the development process for uh, Visuino because Visuino uses it internally. And uh, I uh, am working to maybe by the end of this week or early next week to have uh, an official uh, version that I can send to people that are interested. Uh, and uh, most likely I will list a beta version of it in the next three, four weeks, most likely, depending on how the things are developing. Uh, it highly likely will be official product by the time uh, next uh, expected version of uh, Delphi is going to be out. So. Hopefully, we'll see soon a new version of Delphi, and uh, we will see uh, soon a new version of Communication Lab coming together with it. Excellent. Um, 
Uh, I'll, I'll send you an email of some other questions. It was more about uh, maybe integrations between Delphi and Visuino as it relates to how you, when you already laid out connections like to scopes and other things in Visuino, I'm assuming and I think I'm correct that you're using the same components in the Visuino IDE built in Delphi that you have in your labs that you can drop into a, a normal Delphi project. And Absolutely. whether it's a project file that would give your Delphi app more information about the connections and which components to drag and drop and so on. I don't know if there's some automated export from Visuino, a DFM or something like that. It has been planned. Actually, such functionality has been planned. Uh, simply, I mean, this is very, very rapid uh, development. This is a product that did not exist about four months ago. It absolutely, literally did not exist. Uh, the, very, the product was created exactly uh, on the anniversary of uh, Delphi, during Delphi week. It was shown uh, as very, very first uh, working prototype. Delphi, uh, the Delphi uh, uh, fans that were watching the broadcast at that time were the first people outside of uh, me uh, to ever see that product. And David, I, you were uh, together with Jim McKeeve, uh, were among the first few people to ever see this thing. So uh, this functionality to uh, to copy and paste or export uh, configuration, uh, visualization configuration from Visuino into Delphi may very well appear in the next in the next week or so. Yeah, now that'd be great. Then I wouldn't have to duplicate all that work twice. Yes, yeah. correct, correct. Yeah. What Delphi components do you get when you buy Visuino? How much is it? I love Metoff products and demos. Uh, thank you. Visuino is a standalone uh, product. It doesn't come with any Delphi components. Visuino itself runs as a standalone executable and development environment. However, in this uh, video we demonstrated an upcoming product from Ito Software, which is called Communication Lab. And uh, this, at, at the moment, in this product, there are only four components, which were uh, uh, three of them were demonstrated in the video. Uh, there would be more components included in the packaging. Probably the approximate number will be about 20 in the final packaging. And we expect in the product to be included at least some networking components so you can communicate with uh, things like uh, Arduino boards uh, uh, using the same package. And there's a question, and I should mention that Visuino is still in beta test, right? That is correct. It is available for download uh, to anybody who joins the beta community or sends me email requesting uh, the beta. Okay. Uh, there's a question about what shields are supported by Visuino? Uh, Visuino at the moment has support only for the Ethernet shield. Other shields can are are practically also supported, but you will need to manually make the connections between the components on the shield uh, and the corresponding pins. We are looking to make that uh, easier uh, in future versions, although it is technically not necessary. You can use, la I mean, not, not every single type of shield, but a large number of the available thousands of shields out there. Let's see. This is remarkable and fascinating. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, is there support for C++ Builder 2? The TO, sorry. Uh, no, we uh, we have committed to support only the latest three versions of uh, the Embarcadero products. Uh, so versions older than XE6 are not supported and uh, there, is, there are no plans to be supported. So it's, it's only Delphi for now, right? Uh, no, it is Delphi and C++ Builder. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I missed to answer that part of the question. So it's for both. For okay. both. Got it. As well as for the uh, 
all of the component libraries. I mean, you can use them. Yes, yes, all of them uh, support both uh, Delphi and C++ Builder. And then when you somebody's using Visuino, you're generating the Arduino code, and then it, it uses the Arduino tool to quote unquote compile and send it off to the board, right? Correct. Correct. All right. Let's see. Oh, so there's a question here. I think it's more about, it says, why are we sometimes using OpenWire Studio and other times Visuino? So why do you end up showing both? Just maybe explain that. I, I wanted to show how the technologies integrate into each other effectively. So you, you uh, we have uh, the full range of technologies capable of uh, serving your needs, whatever those needs are. Yep. Okay. And here, I think maybe you answered this, but is Visuino written in Delphi? Absolutely. Okay, so I've typed in those. If you have any other questions, we have a couple more minutes with Boyan during this uh, spotlight uh, uh, half hour. So if you have anything else, uh, put it in the question log. And I am a member of the uh, beta community. How do people join the field test? Do they contact you, Boyan, or? They can just join the community. That's about, uh, I mean, that's the easiest way. Of course, if they just want to get uh, the latest beta, they can email me. But by joining the community, they will be getting constant beta updates as we uh, post a new beta usually every few days. And for those of you, the, it's the it's a beta community. It's the community on Google Plus or G Plus, right? Correct. Yep. Let's see. Um, oh, and and Ken put up uh, the link. I'll I'll hit that. Um, you showed receiving from Arduino. I I assume it's just as easy to send data to the board. That is correct. Otherwise, how would you turn those LED lights on, and and how would you send uh, data from your computer or some other board, for example, and have it do something on yet another board? I think you, you were talking about you could even network the Arduino boards together with. The... Yes, you can you can network the Arduino boards together. Typically, you would do it with Ethernet shield or uh, the Wi-Fi uh, module. So uh, what you would do is you add to the corresponding shield or module uh, sockets and you can add server sockets, you can add client sockets or UDP sockets and then you would put packet and packet uh, components on both sides and you have them open connection to each other. That's as simple as that and they can start exchanging data. I guess you could also have a, a server box or a PC, yes. something yes. else with, uh, with a multi yes. USB yes. hub. Yes, or quite frankly, you can have multiple PCs programmed with, let's say, Delphi that have the same functionality, and even a couple of computers where you're running OpenWire Studio and uh, you are visual, visual, uh, visualizing or generating uh, and processing data there. So you, you can have a very complex uh, infrastructure built with uh, very, very small effort. Yeah, I've got a seven port USB hub that I use because on my MacBook they went from four USB ports to two and when I've got lots of devices uh, I need the extra USB ports. Yeah, uh, yeah. Any idea when it will go live or be available for purchase I guess is the real question. Well he doesn't, he doesn't specify but at most of the conversations yes. seem to be yes. about you know so. Yeah, Visuino is uh, uh, very approximately expected to go uh, really live in about one month. But again, this is expectation. We are still looking at different customer requests. New people are joining the beta. There are constant requests for certain features. So it may get, get delayed by a week or two or something uh, uh, based, based on if, if we decide to add some additional features prior to release. So I'd recommend everybody two things. One is keep track and bookmark the meetoff.com site, but join the community. And uh, Boyan is active on there as, as others are, and he puts notices up uh, as new betas come out. And I suspect that then the word will spread when it's available for purchase. So. Yeah, Vizuino also has its own website, which is vizuino.com. 
So uh, that's actually the best place to go and uh, get the latest uh, on Visuino. So a question here about who created OpenWire and you created OpenWire, right? That is correct. Uh, OpenWire was created by me and uh, I decided that this is too important technology to be owned by one company. So I decided to make it open source and available for everybody. Uh, well said, uh, wow, he's lost for words looking at all of this. I think the other thing, uh, while people are uh, recovering from how cool all this is and putting questions in maybe, uh, is that you mentioned earlier, Boyan, that when you're on the Rad Studio ID side, and with the with the upcoming connection components and pack, pack, unpack it, pack it uh, data components, you can build those applications in Delphi and C++ Builder, right? Correct. Okay, so uh, that answered a question from earlier today. Um, and I have two different Arduino boards uh, at home. Uh, the, the original Arduino and the Due, I guess, or Due, which is the Arduino 2 board, I think. That I've been playing with with Visuino. There's also a, G, a Google Plus or G Plus community that you can join, and join, and then ask to join in the field test if you want to uh, uh, help uh, beat on Visuino. If you've got Arduino boards and you want to run motors and gears and LED lights and temperature sensors and all sorts of stuff. So I don't know. I think. Uh, You've wowed them. Thank you. I mean, I uh, to have this kind of development environment. I I used to do the Arduino just playing around the old-fashioned way, you know, just editing some code, put it in the Arduino, and and uh, and watch what happens and see if it goes how it goes. Um, and one of my daughters went to the School of the Art Institute uh, in Chicago. And you wonder, well, why was, and she took this class um, that used, and she learned how to program the Arduino board. And you wonder, what was my daughter who went to the School of the Art Institute, a prestigious art school, doing taking a programming class with an Arduino board? Well, one of the areas at the School of the Art Institute they have is uh, kinetic sculptures and kinetic art. And these Arduino boards are just perfect for driving motors and gears and creating kinetic art and kinetic sculptures. So she learned some programming using the Arduino language, sort of C-like. Um, I guess it's a tiny C, I think. No, it's actually a full-fledged C++ in it, although RTTI is disabled. Okay. Gotcha. So you flashed up there quickly, but you didn't delve into it. You, you, Visuino pass creates the underlying program and passes it along. Uh, to, you you set up where the Arduino uh, tools are installed on your machine, and you saw the source code when you hit uh, the run that had a metoff.h include, and then down below there's sort of main loop and code and function stuff and so on. Um, and I even had to look up how to stop the loop from happening. Uh, so I figured out how to stop a program on the Arduino. I think you call exit, if I remember correctly. And well, there is the there loop. is no point uh, practically to do such thing because at the moment you exit, the whole uh, the whole board ends doing anything forever. Yeah. So there is, I mean, that's hardly hardly worth uh, trying. I just wanted to prove I could do it. <laughs> I didn't well, want it to keep running for a long time. I guess if I unplugged it, it would stop because it wouldn't have power anymore. Yes, or from the USB cable. Yes, or there is always a hammer. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, that was just uh, something. I just, you know, whenever I see a loop, a repeat loop or a while loop without some exit point, uh, you know, the repeat forever, I just have to figure out how to. And of course, there's ways to do that. So. Not that you would. You're absolutely right. Especially if you're monitoring like a nuclear reactor, you don't want to like exit out of the monitor. Yep. Yeah, that would be bad. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been a long day for both of us, Boyan, but uh, I'll give you the last word for the developers here on this Technology Partner Spotlight. 
Well, thank you, David. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, watching. I hope you have enjoyed the show. And uh, please, if you are interested in Arduino um, development with Visuino, join the beta test. Please come to our main website, meetup.com, see all of the products we have. Uh, we have, I also have to state uh, uh, and extend my uh, gratitude toward Embarcadero and thank them for all the great tools that they have developed. I know that uh, you love them as much as I do. And uh, we will continue to develop uh, interesting and uh, more and more and more interesting uh, products for Delphi and integrate more and more other technologies into Delphi. So stay tuned and I promise you fantastic right ahead. Okay, thank you, Boyan, and thank you, Arun. We'll see you again uh, another time, perhaps, uh, here on the Spotlight or at a Skill Sprint or in person or online somewhere. So thank you for joining us, and uh, take care, everyone. Keep having fun uh, programming. Bye. Thank you, David. Bye.